Hello and welcome to the Sports Perspective. I'm Hayden Grove. And I'm Jordan Elwood. Before we get into Buckeye basketball, um, Hayden, what do you think about Kevin Durant's recent streak of 30 points or more per game? He's been tearing it up on the court. Uh, it's going to be his time coming up here soon. It's going to be interesting to see, you know, the dynamic between him and LeBron, but I'm really excited for him. He's playing really well right now. Um, this Sunday, the Ohio State women's basketball team played host to the Michigan State Spartans in a 12-30 game. I was there to see if the Lady Buckeyes could improve on their 500 record in the Big Ten. Thus far in 2014, the Ohio State women's basketball team can be characterized in just two words, consistently and consistent. After beating the Michigan Wolverines in Ann Arbor this past week, the Buckeyes returned home to the shot to take on the Michigan State Spartans in a Sunday matinee. The Buckeyes started strong, getting out to an early 20-13 lead, but the Spartans countered as their secret weapon entered the game. Six foot eight inch Madison Williams came off the bench for the Spartans and turned the game directly in their favor. Yeah, I thought she was definitely the the confidence giver. Not that you know Tori and, and Clarissa did a great job given the circumstances, but I thought Maddie was the boost. Williams, who was named the Gatorade National High School Player of the Year in 2010, has battled injuries throughout her career in East Lansing, but provided on Sunday a glimpse of just what she can be. When Madison Williams came in, she certainly did a great job defensively around the basket. Um, but what was disappointing is like we, we stopped moving on the perimeter too. So I think as much as there was the actual blocks, like we didn't handle it well mentally because it just it kind of like it took away our aggressiveness. I, I still think we could have attacked the basket and you know maybe she would have blocked a few more but we would have got to the free throw line. We had offensive rebounded. We would have made a few over but we, we quit generating the same aggressive plays and you know that's on us. We didn't we didn't handle it well mentally and show the, the, the toughness to fight through that and uh, to their credit she did a really good job. Accounting for seven blocks in 19 minutes on the floor Williams forced the Buckeyes into making just 24 of their 65 shot attempts as the Spartans defeated Ohio State by a final score of 82 to 68. Sophomore Amaris Alston was certainly affected by Williams herself. Coming into the game as Ohio State's leading scorer, Alston finished with just 16 points on 6 of 18 shooting. While she did believe the Buckeyes weren't getting the officiating they deserved, she placed the blame squarely on the shoulders of herself and her teammates. We don't care how big or how tough you are. I mean, unfortunately, yeah, we at home, but we didn't get those calls at all. It is what it is. We didn't get those calls, but um, that wasn't going to stop us from attacking them. The 13 and 10 Buckeyes will return right here to the shot next Thursday to take on the Illinois Illini in a Big Ten Conference matchup. For Buckeye TV, I'm Hayden Grove. Coming off their loss to Michigan State, the women's basketball team faced off against Illinois on Thursday night. Could the 9 and 10 fighting Illini hand the Buckeyes a second straight home loss? Our sports director Franz Ross was there to find out. The fighting Illini kept it close in the first half, however a second half surge by the Lady Buckeyes provided a big win as the women's basketball team secured a 90 to 64 victory. You know, we got off to a great start. We're up 16 to 5 after five minutes and, and came out and shot the ball really well and played with a lot of energy. And uh, they responded and really played great basketball the next 35 minutes. They took care of the basketball, and uh, uh, Alston was really special tonight. Ferguson off the bench. Uh, we struggled to guard both of those two. Their penetration broke us down, and uh, they did a great job of finding the shots, getting fouled, and then also finding their posts uh, when they were open. Leading the Buckeyes to victory was sophomore guard Amherst Alston who had a double-double in the form of 31 points and 10 assists. Well, first off, she got us going on offense and getting us buckets every, every time. She had like 10 assists, so, you know, she made the team, our team better. For the most part, she had a great game. And, um, you know, I, I think another reflection, when she plays aggressively, that's a big deal for our team. And she was aggressive tonight and, and helped generate a lot, of, a lot of points for herself and for her teammates. The Lady Buckeyes had 39 points coming from the bench, including a huge performance from junior guard Raven Ferguson, who netted 24 points on the night. You know, hopefully she's settled into kind of a, a way of doing things now that, that works for her, and um, it does give us a spark. And I don't know, I think maybe she kind of like her watching the game and seeing how it's going helps her come in and be effective. And she doesn't have that same opportunity if she starts. You know what I'm saying? We kind of fed off her energy, you know what I'm saying? Um, she comes off the bench, so I try to, you know what I'm saying, get the team going. And when she come in, you know what I'm saying, she helped me do that, and we just feed off her energy. In the beginning of the season, I kind of waited to, like, go. 
and now I'm just going and playing and just playing basketball like I know how to play basketball and just being aggressive and just trying to be a, uh, be a be in the possession every time on defense, on offense, whatever I can do is affect, affect the game. The women's basketball team improved to 14-10 and 10 with their win against Illinois. They will next travel to Madison where they will face the Wisconsin Badgers this Sunday at 3. Until then, I'm Franz Ross for Buckeye TV. After the break, we'll be seeing if the men's basketball team could get their second straight home win, and we'll also be reviewing some Buckeye hockey and tennis. Stay tuned. This Wednesday, the men's basketball team returned to the shot to play the Penn State Nittany Lions in their second straight home game. I was there to see if the Buckeyes could gain some momentum after last week's win against Illinois. Well, I, as a team, I don't think we care enough. We these these losses don't hurt enough, dude. This is this is embarrassing. Like every 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 other team in our conference is laugh laughing at us right now. They're on top of the world. Lenzel Smith summed it up perfectly. The Buckeyes have hit rock bottom after falling to the Penn State Nittany Lions for the first time in Thad Mata's tenure by a final score of 71 to 70. For a while, it seemed like things were finally back on track for the Buckeyes. After a decent first half in which Ohio State led by four points and shot 46.4% from the field, Ohio State built an 11-point lead with just 7.59 left in the game. From that point on, however, things completely broke down for the home team. The Nittany Lions tore apart the Buckeyes for the last eight minutes until they found themselves down just three points with 27 seconds left to go and the ball in their hands. Penn State guard DJ Newble waved off his teammates and nailed the game-tying basket, shocking the Ohio State crowd and sending the game into overtime. But Newble wasn't done with the Buckeyes just yet. Up a point in overtime, Ohio State needed just a single stop to secure their second straight win. Instead, Newble took the ball with 11 seconds left, shot it, and sunk it, this time giving Penn State their first victory against Ohio State in the Thad Mata era. It was, I think, 11 seconds left. Uh, we was down by one. Um, I just cleared out one on one side of the floor. I knew that they was going to try to stop me from going right because they've been shading me left all game. So I just made a quick right to left crossover and just pulled up with confidence. Unfortunately, it went down. I take I take credit for it. Um, obviously, you know he's a great player. He's gonna he's gonna take the shot and I let him get back middle, and he made a big one. He made a, a big shot. I, I tried to put a hand up. Thought I was there. It wasn't. You know he, he knocked it down. Following the game, an emotional Lenzel Smith Jr. took the time to describe the loss as the worst in his Ohio State career. This is a, this is a bad loss for this program. And for me and Aaron, um, definitely my senior year, this is not what I had in mind. Um, but, you know, I, I'll never give up on my team. And I know that when we get a cause and we get hungry for wins and, you know, we stick together and we become a team again, I, I'll take us against anybody in the country. But right now, we got, we got to find what we're missing. Whether or not the Buckeyes can climb out of the slump remains to be seen, but they'll take the first step this Saturday as they face the Wisconsin Badgers in Madison. For Buckeye TV, I'm Hayden Grove. The men's hockey team traveled up to Madison last week for a weekend series against the number nine ranked Wisconsin Badgers. For Friday's game, the Buckeyes had the lead at 2-1 for some time in the second period. However, they could not fend off the Badgers, who scored four of the next five goals to take a victory 5-3. Saturday night's game would be a different story as the Buckeyes avenged their first loss with a 3-1 win the next night. After being down 1-0 at the beginning of the second period, freshman forward Nick Schilke and junior forward Nick Otto posted goals to put the Buckeyes into the lead going into the final period. A late in the game empty net goal from junior forward Derek Angeli sealed the victory for the Buckeyes, who now stand at 2, 5, and 1 in the Big Ten with a 12, 9, and 1 overall record. On Sunday, the undefeated men's tennis team improved to 5 0 with wins against Louisville and Toledo in the 2014 ITA kickoff at the Varsity Indoor Tennis Center. With these pair of wins, the Buckeyes maintain their number five national ranking and will go to Houston to play in the ITA national team indoor. Perhaps the biggest piece of news from the men's tennis team is that head coach Ty Tucker reached his 400th victory at Ohio State with OSU's win over Toledo. Tucker is a nine-time Big Ten Coach of the Year and has continued to maintain Ohio State's 177 home game win streak. 
On Friday, the Ohio State men's wrestling team will be taking on Michigan at 7 p.m. at St. John's Arena. The men's hockey team will be facing Penn State in a weekend series at the shot. Friday's game will be at 7, while Saturday's game will be at 2. The men's basketball team will have a pair of road games this week. They first will travel to Madison to play number 14, Wisconsin, this Saturday at noon. On Wednesday, the Buckeyes will square off in Iowa City against the number 15 Iowa Hawkeyes at 7. It's the most wonderful time of the year. No, not Christmas. We're talking about the Super Bowl. On Sunday night, the Denver Broncos will face off against the Seattle Seahawks in the first cold weather Super Bowl at Meadowlands Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. But here's where you come in. Send us who you think will win and what the final score will be by tweeting at us or posting on our Facebook wall. The closest prediction will join our hosts on the National Hour to give a post-game analysis of Super Bowl 48. So send us your best predictions and you could end up on this set. Jordan, before we sign off, I just want to ask you what your plans were for the Super Bowl this weekend. Uh, I'll probably just stay at home and watch with some friends and be happy to be inside and be warm. That's right, people. Stay warm. Well, thank you for tuning in this week. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Have a good night.